In this video, we are going to implement our local authentication token being saved. So what do I mean by that? Well, we saw in the previous video how we modified our auth class to support the ability to set its auth token and have that auth token saved into our shared preferences so that if we were to close the application and come back to it, we would still have our authentication token and thus still be able to log into the application. However, if the application got destroyed for whatever reason, for example, the user closing the application or the operating system reclaiming some memory, the application is no longer aware of the user's profile, of the user's display name or his avatar or anything like that. And for all intents and purposes, it's not logged in anymore. So what we need to do is we need to get the, the auth, auth token out of our shared preferences, hit the API endpoint to make sure that the auth token is still valid, and retrieve additional information about our profile so that we can display our avatar and display name and all that fun stuff. So yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to jump in to our, um, our in-memory account service, and I want to make sure that our set auth token is being invoked at some point. So it is uh, in our login user method. So as you see, whenever any of these login methods gets invoked, our set auth token does get invoked as well, which of course goes to back into our shared preferences and saves that value. So now what I need to do is every time the application is started, we need to check to see if the auth token exists, and if it does, authenticate ourselves. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump into the base authenticated activity. So this is the base class for all of the activities that require authentication in the application, basically anything that isn't a login or register screen. And inside of this method, uh, in the onCreate method, what I need to do is first check to see if we're not logged in. If not application get auth get user is logged in. If that's not true, then we need to do something. And what we need to do depends on if we have an auth token or not. So if we have an auth token that's stored in our application somewhere, in our shared preferences, what I want to do is I want to actually start a different activity. I want to start an authentication activity. And that activity's sole responsibility is going to be sending a request to the server to get your profile information, as well as validate your authentication token. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if auth token, then I'm going to say start activity, new intent, this for the context, and authentication activity dot class, and which our authentication activity doesn't exist yet, but it will. And we'll start that. Otherwise, and we'll, we'll finish ourselves, but um, we'll do that in a second. Otherwise, start the login activity. So as you see right here, we're saying if we're not logged in and we have an auth token, start the authentication acti activity and finish whatever activity it was that was launched. Otherwise, start the login activity. So if they don't have an auth token, start the login activity so that they can log in with their username and password. So now what we can do is we can implement the authentication activity and, and really it, it only has one real purpose and that is to send the, uh, to, to, to send, to dispatch, where are you? The login with local token request. So this is, this is the request response that the authentication activity is going to handle. I also want it to have a layout, but the layout's going to be nothing more than a progress bar in the center of the screen. So over here on my activities package, I'm going to right click, select new class, and I'm going to create an authentication activity. And he is going to inherit, he's going to inherit from base activity, he isn't going to inherit from base authenticated activity, because otherwise there would be an infinite loop. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to override public void on create bundle saved state. And that's going to invoke super on create save state, just like usual. And we're also going to set the content view to r dot layout dot activity authentication. And we'll hit control enter or alt enter rather to import our, our r file and our, our class. And then I'm going to hit alt enter enter to create this layout resource file. And as far as the actual res or layout that we're going to create, um, I'll go ahead and just do a frame layout. And really, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a background, and a background of that primary blue color. 
So I'm going to say uh, background and then color. Actually, no, we want to go ahead and do question mark because we're accessing a, a theme attribute. And we'll say color primary. So we get our nice little primary blue color. And then what I'm going to do is in the center of that, I'm going to put in a progress bar. So I'm going to do progress bar with the width and the height of wrap content. And our progress bar, he's going to have an indeterminate only set to true. And he's also going to have a gravity, a layout gravity set to center. So that'll center him in the screen. And we can't really see it. You can barely see it, but it is positioned, right? You guys are just going to have to trust me on that. Uh, also, we... Um, no, I guess we can just leave it like that for now. Um, all right, so now let's jump back into our base off or our authentication activity and actually implement the, the the call to our service bus. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to verify that our authentication has an auth token. So I'm going to say if not um, application dot get auth dot has auth token. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say start activity new intent this login activity dot class and then I'm going to say finish oops not even close and return and otherwise what I'm going to do is I'm going to say bus dot post new account dot login with local token request and I'm going to for the for the oh it's, you're going to do that are you yeah, fix that uh, login with local token request, and for the token, it's going to be simply application get off um, dot get off token. Now, since we're going to be using uh, the the auth uh, object multiple times, both in the code that we have here, we already, we've already used it twice, and we're going to use it in the next method. I do want to go ahead and factor this out into a field, but I wanted to show you guys a really cool refactoring trick you can do with IntelliJ. So I'm going to select just this bit right here. So just the bit that has the get off method invocation. And then I'm going to right click and select refactor. And you guys can't see this because it's too tall to fit on the screen. So it's popping up on my other screen. But I'm going to go up to the extract menu and I'm going to select field. And then I'm going to say replace all occurrences. And then I'm going to hit enter. So what just happened was that was a really quick way for our two application.getauth calls to be replaced with a reference to this, uh, the this new field that's been generated all the way at the top of the file. And you see that that get auth call is now only happening once. Now, it's a, it's a getter. It's not going to cause a performance difference, but it will make your code a little bit cleaner so I don't have to do application.getauth everywhere. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, handle the uh, response here. So I'm going to say public void on login with on login with local token, and I'm going to say account dot login with local token response response. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if not response dot did succeed. So what did this? What does that indicate that the response didn't or the, the request didn't succeed? Well, basically that means that uh, maybe the network is down, uh, or maybe the authentication token is invalid for some reason. Like maybe our user account has been deleted since the last time we started our app. Either way, the basic premise of this is that we did not successfully reauthenticate with our local token. So what we want to do is we want to tell the user to log in again. So uh, I'm pretty much going to uh, write a toast to that. So I'm going to say toast or to that effect. And I'm going to pass in uh, please log in again with the duration of toast dot uh, length short. And before I redirect the user to the login activity, I'm going to say auth dot set auth token null. So what I'm doing here is we now know that this auth token is most likely invalid. Uh, yeah, maybe there was a network connectivity issue or something, but uh, most likely the auth token has been invalidated for some reason. So I'm going to clear it out here. A, you, you can do this if you want to, or maybe you would want to make this code a little bit more intelligent by detecting if it was a network error. And if it was, then perform a completely different set of uh, steps. But in this case, I'm simplifying things a little bit and just saying, oh, if the request didn't succeed, we're going to assume that the network was fine, but it was a problem with your auth token. So we're going to clear it out of our local storage, uh, out of our shared preferences, so we don't try to log in again with that expired token. 
And then once we've done that, now we can go ahead and say start activity new intent, uh, this login activity dot class, and then finish ourselves um, and return. Okay, so now what I want to do is, so now things get a little interesting. So I need to go back to the activity that started this authentication activity. So this is where things get kind of um, interesting and a little bit convoluted because there's a variety of ways that we can do this. So basically, if you recall, our base authentication, our base authenticated activity is really the base class for most of the activities in this application. And when we properly perform our authentication, when we have a stored auth token, even if the application got closed, we still want to resume where we left off. We still want to jump in to that last activity. And to do that, what we need to do is find out which activity launched this activity. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the class name of the activity that launched the authentication activity as a parameter uh, inside of the um, intent itself. So to do that, what I'm going to do is come up here to the top and create a new public uh, constant string. So I'm going to say public static final string, and it's going to be extra underscore return to activity. I'm going to assign it to uh, extra return to activity. It doesn't really matter what I what I put in that, that text. This is just an arbitrary string here. Ooh, hold on. IntelliJ is warning me that I didn't show that toast. I have a really bad problem forgetting that, which is probably why they put that reminder in there. It's very handy. Uh, don't ignore IntelliJ warnings. Anyway, um, so now I have this extra return to activity, which is going to contain the class of the activity that launched it. So before moving forward, let's go ahead and inside of our base authenticated activity, actually fill in this extra value. So jumping back into our base authenticated activity, before we invoke our uh, or start the, this activity with this intent, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and refactor and then extract and variable. I'm going to call this intent, and then I'm going to say intent dot put extra. And for the name, I'm going to put authentication activity dot extra return to activity. And for the value, I'm going to say get class dot get name. So this code right here will get the name of the current executor, the current executing activity. So if we're in our friends activity, it'll be our friends activity. If we're in a message activity, it'll be our message activity. You might be asking, uh, you might be wondering why I'm why I'm doing it like this, where I'm completely finishing this activity before starting it back up. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and jump back into our authentication activity and extract this data once we have successfully logged in with the auth token. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new intent. I'm going to call it intent. And then I'm going to create a string return to, and return to is simply going to be set to get intent dot get string extra. So we're we're extracting our extra extra return to activity here, and then I'm going to say if return to does not equal null, then I want to basically get turn this return to string into a class again. So I'm going to say try. Intent equals new, oops, that's not even close to how you spell intent. Uh, that's not intent either. That's intent. Intent equals new intent, this class dot for name return to. Then I'm going to say catch, and in this case, for the catch, I'm going to say exception ignored, because I'm not going to do anything with the exception, and I'm simply going to say intent equals new intent, this main activity dot class. Finally, if return to is is null, so the else branch of this if statement, I'm going to say intent equals new intent, this main activity dot class. And then finally, I'm going to say start activity intent, and I'm going to say finish. All right, so now basically the goal uh, or, or the expected behavior, if this is all working, so I'm going to hit play. The expected behavior is that I will be able to log into this application. Um, well, the expected behavior is for it not to crash. That is unexpected behavior. So let's go ahead and figure out why it crashed. Uh, Logcat is... Um... Logcat, there we go. Okay, what are you, what are you, what are you yelling at me about there? 
Oh, I forgot. To <laughs> yes, I don't know how I managed that. I forgot to, in my Android manifest, make it aware of my new activity. That is a common mistake that I make. Uh, I mean, yeah, I could use the wizard thing to make the new activity, the new create new activity thing, blah, blah, blah. But I don't like doing that because it creates menus and layouts and a bunch of stuff that I don't want. I liked having more control over my activities. All right, so let's go ahead and hit run for real this time. And it still crashed. Wow, we're on a roll here. Uh, blah, blah, there was a null something or other. Know something or other on the on user details event in my profile activity. Well, that's really weird. Let's go ahead and. Okay. Well, we did launch our profile activity successfully. Oh, that is that that's actually brings up an interesting. Um, interesting thing here. What I've been hitting play, apparently I've been hitting play to launch my profile activity. So what's interesting now is now I can go ahead and right click my, um, so if I wanted to go into my main activity, I can right click and say run main activity and it'll run that. Oh, well, it'll ask me what device I want to use and then it'll run my main dir activity directly. See, now it works because we have our, our, our login token, our auth token is now being properly saved in our shared preferences. And because it's being properly saved in our shared preferences and being read, it will not boot us back into the login. Okay, so what I need to do now is I want to go ahead and implement my logout method. And I'm going to do that here inside of my views main nav drawer class. And I'm going to do that right here on my logout um method, my on click method of my logout item, my basic nav drawer item. And it's gonna be really simple. It's gonna be uh, application or activity dot get application or get your application dot get auth dot logout. And that's going to do everything from clearing out my auth token to clearing out my user to sending us all the way back to the login activity. So let's go ahead and hit play. I am I'm curious about that that crash earlier, and I and the re, one of the reasons why I wanted to implement the logout right now is so I can test that crash and see what's going on there. So let's go ahead and log out here, and I successfully logged out, and then let's log in, and I'm logged in. Okay, so that seems to be working just fine. Now let's go ahead and try to launch my profile activity directly. So I'm going to right click profile activity and select run. And you see how I get kicked back to my login? That's because I logged out and I don't have an auth token. So if I hit your login and then I hit login from here, I should ju jump into my profile activity and I don't. So it looks like we have a small issue with that. Uh, now that I have an auth token, let's hit play and see what's going on here. So if I hit play, we do go into our profile activity. So I'm curious, oh right, because if we boot it back to the login, the login doesn't, we don't pass the activity that we tried to log into back into the login screen. That's fine, that's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind if the user's auth token for some reason expires or if they try to have never even logged into the application before. I'm fine with kicking them all the way back into the login screen and then having them go from there into the main activity and then from that point forward. In this case, I don't really care about that. So I do want, however, there to be, if you try to log into the profile activity, but you, you're not logged in yet, and if the auth token succeeds, then to go into the profile activity. But either way, I can now right click my contacts activity, for example, and say run activity, use same device, and I should hop right into my contacts activity. So that's gonna save us quite a bit of time testing or debugging that code. So now every time the application closes and restarts, we are still logged in. Of course, until I select log out, and now we're not logged in, obviously. Alrighty, uh, I mean, that's really all I wanted to do in this video. We're pretty much set up with quite a few awesome things at this point in the application. We have our profile page pretty much figured out at this point. And we have our main navigation of our application figured out. We have our authentication figured out and all that fun stuff. Now, of course, again, we're not hitting a real live web server, but we will 
once we finish the rest of the application. So it'll be pretty much pretty smooth from here because we're just going to go through each one of these pages, uh, page by page, and implement them and talk about all the new awesome Android features to get that done. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.